hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hall okay, you get the idea. We're doing a haul. All right, guys, I'm not going to talk for too long. I want to get you right back in there to see the rest of my crazy Christmas covers and holiday-themed comic book covers. i got a ton. I think you're going to like them. Let's get you there. I'm the Near Mint Nerd. Going to pass you over to the other Near Mint Nerd, the guy over at the table, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Okay, so let's keep the Christmas train a rolling. Um, let's start with uh, all the Christmas comics that actually came out this season um, that I've picked up so far. Um, starting with Klaus. I guess it's Claus, right? I keep I keep calling this book Klaus, uh, but it's Claus. Of course, it's Claus by uh, Grant Morrison and Dan Mora. It's Claus and the Crisis in Christmasville. Um, this is a pretty fun uh, little series. Um, there was a one-shot as well last year that I showed you um, that I really enjoyed. And uh, now we got this one for this year. So, lots of fun. Um, next up, we got Harleen Quinzel, number 33. Um, this is the Frank Cho cover. Um... The last great cover he did actually was very recent, uh, a couple issues ago for the Halloween uh, issue. Just loved it. Um, and this one is another winner because um, my all-time favorite piece of literature is A Christmas Carol. Um, as both a Christmas story and just a plain old ghost story. Um, I'm a huge fan. So to see this Frank Cho uh, Christmas Carol uh, representation, a nice little Merry Christmas there. With Harley Quinn is just absolutely right up my alley. Really excited. Um, I probably, you know, this is the B cover. Probably has nothing to do with the story. But super cool anyways. I got the DC Universe Holiday Special 2017. Really like to, I usually pull this out on Christmas Eve. Um, these big, over the last year's was really great too. This cover's by Andy Kubert. Um, just an awesome cover. I love these books. Um, they're really fun. Eleven Festive Fables. So Eleven Short Stories, a great uh, way to spend a Christmas Eve with some comics. We also got The Wicked and the Divine Christmas Annual. Um, I actually haven't read a single issue of The Wicked and the Divine, but I do have the whole series. It's just waiting for me to dive in. I don't know why I haven't uh, done that yet, but um, I'll add this one to the pile. Love the little Christmas sweater homage there. Also picked up Faith's Winter Wonderland Special from Valiant. I don't get a lot of Valiant. Actually, I get very little Valiant, but I couldn't resist getting this one. Um, this is uh, um, the character Faith, who I quite like. I certainly like the idea of Faith. Um, I remember she actually appeared in the original uh, um, Harbinger series of Valiant, so... For some reason, I thought she was kind of a newer character, but um, I've been kind of looking through my old Valiants, and uh, that's not the case. She's been around for a while, since issue number one, I believe. And finally, um, what Christmas is complete without a beautiful Adam Hughes cover? Um, this is Hellboy versus Krampus. That's not the exact title, but because this is, um, you know... A virgin variant, I guess they're called. Um, I can't remember the exact title. It's like Hellboy, you know, versus uh, Krampischnichten or something. Uh, like whatever the German word for that is. But a uh, really cool Adam Hughes cover. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, love this black and white variant. Just sitting on the shelf, too. I guess this wasn't a... Um, I guess this was just a, um, a one-for-one variant. Maybe not, but it was sitting on my shelf like it was on the uh, comic shelf. Usually, um, any comic that's not a one for one is behind the counter, and you got to request it. Uh, but that one was uh, just sitting there, so I assume it's one for one. But I got to tell you, there was about six of the other cover, and only one of on this one. So maybe that's not the case. Okay, so that's the new stuff. Woo! Now we're gonna get into some classic covers that I picked up over the course of the year. Um, this one, maybe one of the more famous ones. Uh, it's Batman The Long Halloween, number three of 13, The Year Long Journey. 
as Batman. Um, and I believe Calendar Man is, is part of this. Uh, that's why it goes throughout the year. I can't remember. I remember really enjoying this, though. Anyways, uh, beautiful Tim Sale Joker cover. We've seen a couple of those recently, too. Oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Love me some Joker. And I love this cover. I love the simplicity of it. I love the white background, the green and red Christmas theme. Um, Joker in a Santa hat. is There's nothing wrong with that. Um, great cover. Also have... Moon Knight, number one. This is actually a one-shot. Moon Knight, Silent Night um, from a few years ago. Can't remember which run this would have been a part of. Um, maybe the run... Is this the Finch run? Like uh, Houston and Finch, maybe? Um, definitely before the Bendis run, I think. I shouldn't say definitely and then follow it up with I think. But I did. What are you going to do? Uh, Milligan and Campbell. Uh, beautiful painted cover. Absolutely gorgeous. There's me in the reflection. It's these bags I'm buying now. They are like they're um, the the bag. Uh, you can feel there's a different quality to them, and it's much more reflective. So uh, sorry you have to see my ugly mug more often. Uh, great cover though. I love uh, um, Moon Knight strangling his uh, trying to strangle his villain with a, a string of Christmas lights. There, good good cover. I guess I'll set that here and move on to the next one. Another really cool cover. This is um, also a one-shot. It's the Marvel Holiday Special 2004. Um, love it. Love this cover. I can't remember what stories are in this one. I know I've read it um, because I actually own this. This is a, a new bought copy. I bought this for a dollar. All the comics you're seeing here are new. I'm not showing you stuff from my own collection. This is just haul stuff that I bought over the course of the year. Uh, most of it for a dollar or two, um, specifically for this one video. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a great cover. Great Spider-Man. We got, I showed you one of these last week, but here's a different issue. Archie's Christmas Stocking. This used to be an annual thing. Um, you know, the Archie Christmas issue. Excuse me, kids. Right now, Santa is getting his Christmas present. This is a weird cover um, because, you know, why is Archie pretending to be Santa with no beard? What are these kids thinking? <laughs> Isn't that strange? I don't know. Anyways, Dan DiCarlo, uh, Don DiCarlo cover. Classic Archie. Good times. It's a good, it's a good Christmas present too. Uh, I have to admit. I got an issue of Lucifer, a Dave Johnson cover. Um, what number is this? This is number 13. Um, February 2017, is that right? Huh. You know what? I actually, uh, I must have got this, uh, pretty recently. I guess this came out last Christmas, but you know, I actually thought this was from the original Lucifer series. Um, that's so funny. Not that funny, but I have all the, uh, issues of that, but I, I guess I, uh, I guess I didn't recognize this was a new comic. Um, hmm, okay, well, I got it for a dollar anyways. Uh, Walt Disney, Mickey and Donald. Merry Christmas. This is from the Gladstone um, series that came out in the, this is either late 80s or early 90s, I think late 80s. This is the number, uh, number one. Um, I, anyone who watches uh, this channel, watches my, uh, any of my videos knows I love Disney comics, just love them. Um, and so mixing Disney with Christmas is always a winner for me. Love that one. Um, what else do I got? This one doesn't really read super like a Christmas issue, but it is. Spectacular Spider-Man number 173. Guess who dropped by for the holidays, as it says up there on the moon. Um, you know, it must be uh, one of those, what is it like the... Um, um, what lunar cycle is it where words show up on the moon? I can't remember. Um, but you can see um, there's also a Christmas tree there inside the house. There comes MJ. Remember when? Do you remember this period when they had like a, some teen girl living with them for some reason? I barely remember that. I don't know who that is. I remember, was it like a niece of Mary Jane or something like that? Anyways... Uh, great classic issue, great classic villain. 
Just a good old, fun, enjoyable read. What more can you ask for, right? Here's a nice oldie. This is Jonah Hex. Um, not even Santa Claus is safe from our favorite anti-hero. 40 cent cover price, number 34. That would put this in the, um, I would say, probably around 77 as a guess. Um, it looks like there was a real Santa here and this guy replaced him and that's why Jonah's coming after him. Go ahead, spread some holiday cheer amongst the kitties or there'll be another dead Santa around here. So I can't remember reading this, but I do from the cover, I'm guessing that uh, this impersonator killed the Santa and was hiding out. And now Hex is there and he's got him dead to rights, but he's going, you know what? Before I take you in, you varmint, I want you to entertain those kitties. So uh, it shows a little humanity there for Jonah Hex, if that's the case. All right, what else we got here? Oh, Green Lantern. Ho, ho, ho. Green Lantern. Uh, this is 109, Ghosts of Christmas Past. And we see um, Jade huddled up next to the Christmas tree. Um, is that Oberon? Because that's her brother, right? Is that what this is about? Uh, something to do with Oberon? I don't know. That's just a guess. I can't remember this issue. 109. Uh, yeah, this wasn't a great period. Um, in Green Lantern, um, it was during the Kyle Rayner run, which was great. I was a huge Kyle Rayner fan. Um, but after 100, it kind of went downhill a little bit. Kind of like was on autopilot just a bit. What else we got here? Superman, the Man of Steel. It was a wonderful life. <sighs> I showed a Superman last week where it was like bulbs on a tree had face, face reflections. And here's another one. I could probably do a whole haul of just that. Mark Schultz, Duncan Rouleau. Yeah, not again. This was not a terrific period. This was the Triangle Years. Remember the Triangle Years when um, there were four Superman titles, and uh, so there was basically one a week, and they put triangles on the cover to tell you, um, you know, what followed what, so you could read it in one continuous arc. Oh, that's so funny. I just said um, that. There was another comic that I showed last week with um, reflections and bulbs, but I didn't show it last week. It's right here. Unless I showed it last week as well. I can't remember. Um, but there it is right there. This is Superman 165 by Mr. Jeff Loeb. Uh, McGinnis Art. Um, cool cover, though. Really like this. I like that. I like McGinnis. He doesn't, you know, he's a slow artist. Um... He does the big chunky figures. I like him. He, I, I'm not sure what he's doing these days, though. What do you get the JLA for Christmas? Apparently some Christmas bulbs. Do you think... I like that these bulbs just are, are have characters on them, but she's reaching for one that probably actually is Plastic Man. Um, because it doesn't have a reflection of him. It's just his colors. All right. I got a Batman and the Outsiders. I showed one last week, too. They have a bunch of Christmas issues. Mike Barr, Jim Apparel, this is number eight. Um, where are the children? Well, maybe they're in the presents. I got Judge Dread number six. Um, disappointingly, it's not a it's not a um, Brian Boland cover because uh, Boland did a lot of amazing Judge Dread covers, um, but cool cover nonetheless. Face it, Juve, <laughs> there is no Santa Claus. Oh, the juveniles. Seasonal 52-page giant size issue. Oh, that's a nice chunk of story. Um, I've never been a huge Judge Dredd fan, but I do like these older ones a little bit. I have to admit, this is Quality Comics, number six. Um, what's this in the corner here? Who's this? What's this say? Let me get my glasses here and give that a read. Brett Ewins. Brett Ewins, you've done it again. I don't know if that's true. All right, what else we got here? Another DC Universe holiday special, number one. This is a one-shot. Um, I'm not sure what year this is from. Uh, it looks like a Frank Quitely piece of art, almost certain. A beautiful piece of art. Love the Santa up there. Oh, that's a great cover. Oh, February 09. Okay, so it's almost a 10-year-old comic. 9-year-old comic. That's uh, 
Huh. I would have thought it was from a little more recent. You can see it's got a bit of a dent here, unfortunately, but it's a big, thick comic, and it only cost a buck, so it's in good shape otherwise, though. What else do we got here? Oh, here's a fun one. The Lobo Pil Paramilitary Christmas Special. As Lobo puts the beat on Santa Claus. Uh, that's too bad. Keith Geffen, Alan Grant, Simon Bisley. Contains bad taste. There's a warning, guys. Contains bad taste in the form of ultraviolence. Icon bashing. And the finger. More offensive than Christmas usually is. Oh, boy. Um, I don't always love cynical Christmas stuff. I like to feel good at Christmas, but I do. I do like Lobo, and you know what you're getting when you get a Lobo comic, so we'll forgive them. What do we got here? Ambush Bug Stocking Stuffer. Caution, do not open before December 25th. Well, I guess I know what I'm reading Christmas Day. Uh, I love I love Ambush Bug. He's a fun character. He didn't, you know, he doesn't do too much. There's a few comics, but um, great fun character. He was never able to kind of maintain a title. He, he had a bunch of, like, one-shots and four-issue... Um, series nothing much beyond that though but uh i love this i love this classic gif and art um we don't see too much of it anymore which is a shame he's mostly a writer these days but uh used to used to get a big kick out of that stuff for sure here's a cool one the howard the duck holiday special love this one pesquale fairy uh issue number one I'm not sure what year this is from. Um, probably like 98, 99. I'm guessing just from the packaging kind of has that feel. Um, yeah, we didn't. We weren't getting a lot of... Uh, oh, look. Uh, Hydra. There's a little Hydra thing. That was from years ago, too. Um, we weren't getting a lot of Howard Duck at this time. It, he was still in the, in the naughty list for that uh, Howard the Duck movie at the time, I think. Uh, so... We didn't see too much of him, but it's good to have him back now. Oh, I missed this one. This is from this year as well. Whoops. Okay, so this is um, DC Universe Rebirth Annual Green Arrow number one. Happy holidays. This one was actually originally um, solicited in October, and then they wisely kind of pushed it back um, a few months to because it's clearly a Christmas issue. Um, may have even been in the summer. They pushed it back several months, I think. Um, which makes sense. I don't know why they would have thought to release it any other time, really. All right, we got Hawk and Dove, number 20. Season's Greetings, 40 Isles of Sheer Adventure. Who doesn't love a good Die Hard um, homage? We are toys. So I've been seeing there's a new Titan show and Hawk and Dove are appearing on it. Um, so Don Granger's first appearance which is in a uh, the first issue of a, a Rob Liefeld version of the comic, might, after all these years, after, like, what, 30 years, might be worth more than a dollar. Who knows? Uh, let's see here. What do we got here? Green Lantern, the Lar Flea's Christmas special, um, in which I'm sure Lar Flea says, mine, 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 a lot, because he's the orange lantern. He's the lantern of avarice. He's greedy, folks. He just wants things, um, which means it's probably a, a very cynical special, but maybe it has a heartwarming ending. I'm not sure. I haven't read this one. I'm going to read it. It is by Jeff Johns after all. So uh, certainly it'll be, uh, it should be an interesting read. And it's nice to see Kyle Rayner there. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. We've got the Rockettes. Come on, guys. The Rockettes are on that cover. Ooh, here's a classic. Seasons Creepings from Terror, Inc. You better not shout. You better not cry. You better not pout. Get ready to die. Uh, remember Terror Inc., guys? <laughs> remember, remember in the 90s when we got a lot of terrible titles? I believe this was... Was Terror Inc. part of the Midnight Suns line? I can only imagine it was. Um, regardless, this character was a non-starter. Um, this was his first and only, I believe, um, uh, series. He may have got a, a one-shot or two along the way, but... Uh, Yikes. Yikes. Not missed. We got Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. Number 79. This is like a hundred and some odd issue series. And not a single one of them have any real value. 
Um, because it was, I guess, was this considered out of continuity? It was just like kind of tales of the Batman. Yeah, Legends of the Dark Knight, right? Um, I don't know if anyone ever considered this in a, a continuity title. Favorite things. Uh, but it is by Mark Miller, so that's pretty cool. Stevie Owl. Um, I'm actually going to read this one because it looks like it's it's probably a one-shot. And uh, that's what I like to read at Christmas is one-shots. I don't like to read, you know, big, long story arcs. Force Works, number eight. Guess who's coming to Christmas dinner? Well, I don't know, but he certainly, certainly has kind of... Mm, what is that? Hawkeye, probably? Got kind of that... Uh, He's the only Avenger I can think of that has that uh, silhouette. Um, remember this guy? Who's this guy? I have no idea who that is. You know, sometimes I'll like look it up and add notes. Um, not even going to do that because not even worth it. Uh, I don't know who that is. Don't completely care. Um, but everybody else is. I believe this is um, uh, Jack Daniels. Was that his name? Or... Um, oh. Like the Captain America guy, right? The the guy who took over for Captain America in the 300s. Um, is Jack not Daniels the name? He, no, Johnny Walker. His name's John Walker, but he used to be Jack Daniels. We're very clever writers. Um, I'm not even sure why I remember that, quite frankly. Scarlet Witch. Um, Spider-Woman, of course. Uh, Jessica Drew version, I think. Maybe. Uh, Iron Man, and I don't know the other guy. All right, we just had a little bit of a little bit of a snafu there that we had to take care of, but we're back with more excellence. Move that, and we got what the number sixteen. Happy holidays from the Marble Gang, and then uh, it's just like uh, zombies. <laughs> I like Morbius there. Hey, I thought this was a Halloween cover. Okay, there's another Christmas ball. Ooh, look at that dagger appears in this one, I guess. I love this title. I've got the full run. It's really silly, but you know what? Sometimes that's what you need. Here's another Walt Disney Comics um, story. Uh, Walt Disney Comics and Stories. They, they took off the and stories, but it's still called that. Um, January number 640. This was... Uh, I showed you one of these last week, too. These I love these books. There's... Uh, what? Who is that? Uh, one of the ganders. One of the ducks. Anyways, it looks like they hired him to play Santa Claus, and he fell asleep. Oh, dear. These are the square bound. They're about 64 pages, I think. Um, they're excellent. They come with four or five stories. Um, some of them are classic old stories. Some of them are new stories. Um, but they all look amazing. In part one of this uh, series, I showed you the inside, the interior. It is gorgeous. Great page quality. Um Plus, it comes with a couple of pages where the editor just talks about the stories, where they came from, how they sourced them. Really cool stuff. Excellent, excellent stuff. Um, here we have another Archie's Christmas Love In. That's a 35 center, actually. This is a, this is a nice little uh, classic Archie. Oh, Daddy, I'm so full of Christmas cheer. I must be, too. I'm even glad to see Archie. Aw, isn't that heartwarming? Oh, Mr. Lodge. You're an old softie. Um, yeah, there it is. Christmas loving. Loving it. Oh, Betty's getting a little kiss under the middle, mistletoe up there. 35 center. That's pretty cool, eh? Pretty good condition, too. All right, what do we got here? DCU Holiday Bash number three. This is from 1999. Don't love this cover. I don't know who this guy is. Um, we can see the reflection of it. It's actually a Joker cover there. Look at that. Um, but I don't love that. I don't love this reflection cover. Yeah, not very Christmassy. I guess he's wearing a hat like this. That's really the only thing is you know he's got the fluffy part of the hat there. But it's even hard to tell that. Eh, pretty weak. All right, what else we got? Green Lantern number thirty six. I remember when this issue came out. Um. It was uh, right around the time that I started working at a comic shop in Winnipeg called Comic World. And uh, I remember this is one of the, one of the issues that uh, got me interested in Green Lantern. I just love this cover. I don't, it, it really did. It's a Gene Hawk cover. And uh, I don't know what it was, 
maybe it was the Christmas spirit, but uh, I had never really re read Green Lantern before that. And I became a huge fan, ma mainly based on this cover. I know that's really weird because it's not a super special cover, but I just like the idea that Green, that this superhero was getting wrapped up in Christmas lights and that was what was defeating him somehow. Um, the sad thing about this issue is that it's uh, written by Gerard Jones, who unfortunately um, is uh, an accused pedophile, maybe convicted uh, pedophile at this point, but uh, he had a long run on a lot of these titles. Uh, you know, he did a long Justice League run, he did a long Green Lantern run, and uh, I don't know, you know, very disappointing. I don't know if I even want to keep the comics that he, he wrote, you know, like, I don't want to get any enjoyment out of something written by, um, you know, someone who would harm children, especially being a dad. Oh, look, here's another comic with uh, reflections in the balls. This is uh, Marvel, the Punisher, Punisher Holiday Special. Special double-sized issue. I told you I could probably do a whole haul of just Christmas trees with reflections in the bulb. I showed you one last week, too. It was the X-Files Christmas Annual, and it also had a Christmas tree, and all the characters appeared in the bulbs. And uh, do you think that's it? Do you think there's no more like that? Well, guess what, guys? How about one more? Here's a real oldie. This is um, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number 10. Um, 12 center, guys. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look, look at the condition, by the way. This is a Silver Age comic, guys. You know, closer to the end of the Silver Age, sure, but that is, like, pristine. I would say this is easily, easily a 7.5. Probably higher. Because they give a little bit of... It's got a, a cover date stamped on it, but other than that, the back's really clean, too. The staples are great. Um, I own a lot of Silver Age. I don't own a lot in super high condition, but, man, that is a nice book. Um, I did not get that for a dollar. I got that for seven ninety nine, and you know what? That's still a bargain. Got another Christmas Archie. This is the Christmas Spectacular. This is a fifty cent one, um, although it's from around the same era as the thirty five cent one because this is actually a giant size, so it's a little bit thicker, not much thicker. Uh, only three shopping days to Christmas, and only three kissing days till Christmas. Look, there's Betty with that, uh, once again, there's Betty with uh, with her mistletoe. That's her old trick. Man, I guess you go with the classics, right? All right, what do we got here? We got Marvel Team-Up, Spider-Man and the Watcher. Um, not a, a super uh, Christmassy cover, but it does say special Christmas issue. So, you know, that holds more than, more than its weight. Um, I actually really like this issue. And if you thought the Punisher only had one Christmas cover, well, sir, you'd be wrong because we have a Marvel Knights one-shot, the Punisher Silent Knight, which is also the name of that Moon Knight special, by the way. The only difference being the K at the beginning of Night. This is by Andy Diggle. Hot's, um, what's his, uh, I can't remember his first name, uh, but I do like Hot's. He does, uh, he just has a really unique style. This isn't him here on the cover for sure, I don't think. Um, because his his style looks more unique than this. Um, but this is cool. And this is another one where, um, uh, you know, we have a character dressed up like Santa. And, uh, you know, has kids sitting on his lap. Yikes. Moms, dads, don't let your kids sit on the Punisher's lap for crying out loud. All right, we got The Brave and the Bold, starring Batman and Plastic Man. Uh, the Night the Mob Stole Christmas. Oh, the, the mob's always doing terrible things, isn't it? Um, pretty much any comic with Plastic Man in it, um, I will buy. I love Plastic Man. There's Santa as well. It's a newsstand, but I don't know if it's, um, you know, the 40 cent means that it's right around the time when the direct market started. So I don't know if there was a direct market version of this. Um, or only the new stand, I'm not sure. We got Iron Man, Ho Ho Homicide. It should be Ha Ha Homicide, not Ho Ho Homicide. Um, but that's just me and semantics doing our dance in the moonlight. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. 
All right, here's uh, had a little eggnog, maybe <laughs> a little rum and eggnog. Iron Man 254, um, classic Christmas cover there. Lots and lots of Christmas tree covers. Well, look at this one, Man of Steel uh, in a Yule duel with the Parasite. Actually, you know what? I showed you this last week. I must have had doubles uh, and didn't realize it. So here it is again. If you didn't see it last week. Um, this is actually part two of this video, so um, here's a little sneak peek of part one if you want to go back and check that out. And this is a newsstand because uh, uh, by the time we got to 60 cent cover prices for regular sized issues, uh, we definitely had the direct market stuff there. Um, here's another newsstand. Big thick one. Christmas with the Superheroes, number one, 1988. Beautiful newsstand copy. Um, great condition for a newsstand. Got it for a buck. It's not quite as white as maybe, but I don't even know. It might just be the cover stock. I'm not sure. It was a little uh, beige. Um, or maybe it's just, you know, aged a little bit. I don't know. Um, Superman got... I love that Superman's present is in a lead box, so he can't peek. Um, because the suggestion is that Superman can't be trusted not to peek in his present. But then again, can any of us really? I got the, the tick. Big Yule Log Special. Um, great cookies there of Tick and Arthur. Um, I don't think I've read this. I'm, I'm never sure if these books are reprints or not. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely give that one a read. Uh, as I said last week, the Tick's one of my all-time favorite characters. One of the first characters I started reading when I was younger. JSA, number 55. Uh, Carlos Pacheco is such a great artist. I wish he would do more. Uh, but I love this cover, Wildcat sitting on Santa's lap. As Alan Scott looks on, also in a Santa hat. I love the kid saying, wow, Catwoman needs a shave. That's awesome. Jeff Johns, you can't go wrong. The whole run, this whole run was by Jeff Johns. It was brilliant. Um, remember this one? <laughs> I got two copies. This is what happens when you, do, when you do as much buying as I do at the dollar bins. As you never realize you're buying doubles. Um, Dennis the Menace, <laughs> I love this cover. The red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. Rep this is a reprint. You see there it says re-representing two Christmas classics. This is when Marvel Comics had the license. Um, this was number five. I own much of this series, um, but I don't think I own that issue. So I'm actually looking to re forward to reading that one. I'm a big fan of Dennis the Menace. Um, I also have a lot of... Um, Treasury digests of the, of the actual newspaper comic strip. Um, I'm a big fan. Here we have another JLA, Twas the Fight Before Christmas. I want to say I showed this one last week as well, um, just because I remember Twas the Fight Before Christmas, but they may have just used that catchphrase on another comic. Anyways, Christmas and Plastic Man. Um, two automatic triggers for me to buy. So you probably thought that uh, the Punisher only had two Christmas specials. But you'd be wrong again. He's got a third, the Punisher holiday special. Oh, it's just a generic holiday, you say, though. Uh, it's not a Christmas one. Well, then why is the corner box wearing a Santa hat? Your argument doesn't make any sense, people. Come on, get with the program. 1992, this is number two. Um, so I guess it's the number two to that very first one I showed you. I'm not, I'm not gonna go back and find out. We also got DC special number two from 1989, all new Christmas with the superheroes. I love these covers where you can just stare at the cover for like 20 minutes and find new things going on. Like there's something about super busy covers that I just dig. And this one's great. Um, I just stood in the store. This was a buck, but I just stood staring at it for so long because there was so much enjoyment to be found on it. Happy holidays from DC. I also got... The Sleepwalker Holiday Special. Um, however, besides the fact that it says Holiday Special, there is nothing here to indicate any sort of Christmas angle. Um, it is a beautiful uh, Joe Quesada cover from 1991 um, with Kevin Nolan. Not Kevin Nolan. Kevin Nolan? Yeah. Kevin Nolan. Is that right? That sounds weird to me. Uh, Kevin Nolan, I think, is right. I'm getting, I'm, maybe I'm getting it mixed up with Christopher Nolan in my head. Anyways, uh, nothing looks Christmas. Maybe by holiday special, they mean summer holiday special. I don't know. 
Um, I really didn't take that close a look at it until I was preparing it for this video. And then I was like, ah, oh, whatever. Who cares? Uh, Batman and the Outsiders. This is the third one. Um, I showed you one other in this one, and then there was one in part one. Merry Christmas, Emily Briggs. You're a looker. Um, it's not weird that that's her, like, superhero name. Looker. What's her power? Is she, like, psychic or something? Like, or is it just, like, she's called Looker because, you know, presumably she's, she's a looker. She's hot. Or... Is she called Looker because it has something to do with her power? That's how little I know about this character. I'm not even sure. All right. We're almost at the end here, guys. I know you're getting impatient, but uh, don't worry. Two left. We got uh, another... Um, oh, I was going to say another <laughs> Judge Dredd. That's not the case. It is quality comics, but this one's 2000 AD Resents. Not Presents. 2000 AD Resents. And this is... Um, I think this is 52 pages, no ads. Uh, number 12, there it is. Um, I don't know any of these characters. I do like 2000 AD, um, but I don't have a lot of it. I usually read it in other formats, like the trades and stuff. Um, so I don't know DR and Quinch, um, you know, at all. But uh, I, I do like the stuff they do. I, you know, I love the British invasion writers. I'm sure this is by those guys. Oh, yeah, look, Alan Moore. How about that? This is an Alan Moore story. Alan Davis does the art. Well, that's, you know, isn't that the uh, Captain Britain team? Um, did Alan Moore do Captain Britain? I think so, right? Anyways, I digress. Our final, final issue, The Adventures of Superman, number 487. From 1992, you can see it's part of the Triangle Era, um, the seventh uh, storyline of the year. Giant Turtle Boy... Um, that's that would be Jimmy Olsen, I guess. A Jimmy Olsen action figure, although Jimmy Olsen's right here, so that's weird. Happy holidays to the Children's Aid Society from Bibo. Bibo, that's Superman's pal, Bibo. Um, yeah, great cover, great fun. Love a good Christmas story. I wonder if this is a, I wonder if this is a very special Christmas tale. Um, you know, having to do with the Children's Aid Society. I'm not sure. What do I know? Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed all these covers. This was part two. Guys, ha I, I was so happy to spend 2017 showing you my stuff. I want to continue to do that in 2018. I really hope you guys have an awesome Christmas, an amazing holiday season, a happy Hanukkah, a crazy Kwanzaa, whatever you guys celebrate. Have just, you know, have a great time with your families. Um, you know, get into the spirit, the, the, the holiday spirit. And, uh, you know, don't get too crazy, um, but have a real nice finish to the year and uh, have a great New Year's Eve. And I'll see you on the other side of 2017 as we enter 2018. OK, guys, I'm going to pass you back now uh, over to um, Near Mint Nerd on the other side. And I hope you guys just keep on keeping on. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit like and all that stuff uh, that I'm sure I'll tell you again in two seconds. Take care, guys. And good night. Hallelujah! What? What do you? What do you mean? That's not a Christmas carol. Of course, it's a Christmas carol. Oh, it's not. Are you sure? Well, I could do "Dig the Halls with Balls of Comics." No, that's terrible. How about uh, "Jingle the Halls"? Jingle the Hall. Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry, didn't see you there. Okay, well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed. Part two of our Christmas haul here for our December 2017 haul. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back early in the new year with some more hauls. Uh, hopefully a little more um, often and a little more regular. Uh, I know I haven't been around as much as, uh, as you'd like or as I'd like. I mean, you probably couldn't care less. There's all kinds of great, um, all kinds of great co um, comic content on the uh, internet these days. So many people in this community have awesome sites. So get out there and check theirs out. Don't worry about what I'm doing. I'll pop in from time to time. Um, I guess that's it. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to like. Drop me a, a message or a question. I love interacting with you guys. Um, other than that, I'm going to see you guys in January. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Uh, have a happy you know, uh, New Year's Eve. Don't get too crazy. 
you know, bring a designated driver, however you're gonna do it. It's good to see you all. I'm gonna talk to you again soon. Uh, allow me just to sing this Christmas carol on the way out. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Well, you get the idea. Bye, guys.